not waste the time. So, uh, uh, what I discussed in the previous class uh, of this course is uh, we are coming across the electrochemical series wherein the metal's activity is arranged in the decreasing order of the standard reduction potentials. Fine. So, is it not we have discussed in the previous class? So, what I discussed, maybe I can show you the. This is what we have discussed. Yes. This is what uh, I covered in the previous class about the electrochemical series, wherein the metals activities have been represented in the decreasing order of their standard reduction potentials. Why I said reduction potential? Because the reaction written is a reduction reaction. We look at the reaction F2 plus 2 E gives rise to F minus. So accepting electrons is called reduction. So, in that order, the value, highest value for the reaction is 2.87 and it is in the decreasing order. And I already told the arrow mark pointing top shows the increasing strength of the oxidizing agent. So, what do you mean by oxidizing agent? A species which accepts the electrons is called oxidizing agent. That's why F2 is the strongest oxidizing agent. Right? And then similarly, the lithium. Lithium is the strongest reducing agent, pointing down. This is what we discussed in the previous class. Now, why, where we use this information? We use this information in galvanic coupling. When two metals have been contacted, one metal which is above in the series will be always acting as a cathode or very inert material and always which is at the bottom will be always active material which involve or which undergo in the oxidation reaction and get corroded. So this information we used in the electrochemical series. Now my next question is how these values are fair? If you know the values, it's very easy. That's what we discussed. If I know that copper is above than iron, then copper will be in the inert and iron will be in the active. So iron will be corroded if I connect with copper. Otherwise, if zinc is down to the iron, iron will be in the inert and zinc will be in the active. So, zinc will get corroded and iron will be protected. Unless and otherwise, if I know the values or the sequence which is top, which is bottom, I cannot be able to predict which is going to be corroded or which is going to be not corroded. The next question comes is, how we have formulated this inert values? Okay, now just look at yes. Just look at this uh, figure once again, because these figures will give you a lot of information. So, what is the figure? The first figure shows iron in contact with the copper, and second figure shows iron in contact with the zinc. So what is going to happen if I connect iron with copper? Iron is going to be corroded and copper is going to be deposited. And what is the potential if I connect with some voltmeter? I am getting something around 0.7 Same iron if I connect with the zinc. Iron will be deposited. Zinc will be losing electrons. That means zinc will be getting corroded. And if I connect with the voltmeter, I am getting something potential 0.3. Now, just clearly observe the diagram and the flow of electrons in each of these figures. Look at the first figure, the flow of electrons will be from left to right. And look at the this figure, the flow of electrons will be from right to left. Now you tell me why the flow of electrons will be opposite in the two cases. 
See the, the, the one material is common here. What is that material? Iron. In the left side figure, the electrons are coming from the iron. If you look at the diagram, you see the electrons? The electrons are coming from iron. That's why the marking showing that side. That, what do you mean by this side? Means electrons are coming from the iron surface, going back, going back, going back, and coming in contact with the copper. So look at in the right hand side figure. For the same iron, turn out to the zinc, iron is getting the electrons rather than losing. See, the electrons are coming from the zinc, aroma, aroma, and reaching the iron surface. Now, one should be very clear the metal is iron only. In one of the figure, iron losing electrons. In another figure, iron is accepting electrons. Is it not the direction change? Observe clearly the figures. In one of the configuration or one of the setup, iron is losing electrons to the other electrode. In another configuration or another setup, iron is taking the electrons from the metal called zinc. Now we have to understand, can a same material lose electrons, accept electrons? Metal is same. Is it not? Iron is same. In the both the figures, iron is same. In one of the setup, iron is losing. In another setup, iron is accepting. Of course, the answer is very clear. Iron is losing means iron is getting oxidized and that is corroded. That's what the first figure says. And in second figure, iron is protected. Iron is not losing. Remember, iron is not going to be oxidized. Instead, zinc is getting oxidized. Zinc is losing electrons. That's why this loss of electrons are going here. Fine. So that's what the demarcation. Now, let us go to a figure where I can talk about electrode processes. Now you just understand, if I took a glass of water or some acid and if I dip a zinc rod, we observed in the first case, the corrosion of zinc, what is going to happen? If I, if I dip zinc rod in HCl solution, what is going to happen? Zinc is getting corroded. So the first instance we see effervescence of the bubbles. Okay, that effervescence of bubbles are from hydrogen gas. Because the HCl solution, the H plus ions available will accept the electrons from the zinc rod because zinc is losing electrons. So in that way, H plus plus two electrons gives H2 hydrogen <coughs> bubbles we will see. Fine. Now, the, my, my question is, when you dip zinc rod in HCl solution, either zinc lose electrons, if I, if lose electrons, what is the sequence of electrons passage? Left side figure or right side figure? If zinc is losing electrons, what is the figure in the previous setup? Is from left to right or right to left? Left to right, because zinc is losing electrons, so the left over electrons will be reaching to the other end. For example, zinc is not losing electrons, time being, let us assume. So, what could be the other thing around? Other thing around will be zinc should take the electrons. That's what we have in the second setup. Fine. So, if you observe any metal, any metal dipped in some solution, definitely that metal will undergo oxidation or it undergoes reduction. Either the metal will lose electrons to form oxidation state or oxidation species will take up the electron to form zero or reducing state. Is it clear or not? The metal can lose electrons. That's what, see, all the reactions are reversible reactions. Zinc will lose two electrons to form zinc 2 plus. Fine. In a similar way, Zinc 2 plus ions will accept the two electrons to form zinc. <coughs> this will also happen. Now, the, my next question is let us assume, let us say this metal is zinc. When I put zinc in this electrode system or water or a HCl solution, zinc is losing electrons for time being, let us assume. So, that means what? Zn gives rise, Zn 2 plus, because two electrons will lose, 2 plus plus 2 electrons. Now, the next two movement, that means what? When this reaction happens, what will be on the surface of the metal? 
what will be on the surface of the zinc? Electrons only because zinc is losing electrons. So on, on entire surface, on entire surface, electrons are accumulated, is it not? Because zinc wants to lose electrons. So what about the zinc 2 plus ions? It will go into solution. So when I dip zinc into the HCl solution or water molecule solution, zinc will lose zinc 2 plus ions which will go into the solution. But the two electrons which are left, it is left out the electrons. So these left two electrons will be residing on the surface of the zinc only. They have to go out. If I connect some wire, it will go out in the first system. In the first system what I did, I connected zinc with some other thing or iron with some other thing so that there is an electron flow passage I am given which in sort of some pipe. So electrons are left over. I have shown with left to right system. But if I don't connect the any electrical wire system, where will be the electrons residing? On the surface only. If I won't dip in the solution, zinc will be in the zero oxidation state. When I dip with some solution, zinc will oxidize to form zinc 2 plus ions which will go into the aqueous solution. But the electrons will be residing on the surface. Now let us think after some time what will happen to the zinc surface. It will be completely negative charge. Electrons accumulate out in and out in the surface is having always negative charge. So the zinc is having negative charge on the surface. Clear or not? Now think this complete surface is negative. Let us assume after I dip in the surface, after I dip in some solution. This surface is now completely negative because electrons are it is losing. The surface is having completely negative charge. So what will happen if negative charge is there? Obviously it attracts the positive species. So what will be the positive ions available in the solution? They try to attract. See the positive. Now what I said about electron neutrality principle. I said earlier the electron neutrality principle, that means what? Rate of oxidation should be equal to rate of reduction. Both oxidation reduction should go at the same pace, same time. So that there will not be any charge on the surface. I told earlier, see zinc if I left as it is, the, I, if, if, I, if I contacted the zinc, I will get some shock. But that is not going to be happen. That means what? These electrons which are on the surface has been taken up by some other thing. What is the some other thing? In our case, let us say HCl, H plus ions, good oxidizing agents, accept the electrons quickly. So H plus ions accept the electrons from the surface of the zinc from hydrogen, which are aperivating the bubbles. So there is electron neutrality principle is working here. Otherwise, what will happen? The surface will be entirely negative and whatever the solution will be entirely positive. This complete solution is with zinc 2 plus ions. That is, past 2 charge is accumulated in the solution. Negative charge accumulated on the surface of the zinc, but that is not going to be happen because I, I dipped in a solution where H plus ions are available. H plus ions are good oxidizing agents. They quickly accept the electrons. So whatever the electrons are on the surface of the zinc, H plus ions will take two H plus plus two electrons to form hydrogen, which hydrogens are effervating on the zinc surface. Now the question is, whatever the electrode dipped in the solution. At the interface, what is the interface here? This is the electron surface and this is our solution. Now this is the surface, interface. At that interface, if there is any charge imbalance, there will be some potential developed. And that potential is called electrode potential. And that potential we are represented in the right hand side values. You got what? What is E0? Standard reduction potential. Now what is reduction potential first? That is the potential that is developed at the interface between electrode and the solution. Because you observe, there will be certainly there will be an imbalance here. Is it not? See how much electrons available here. That may not be equal to the how much positive species which are connecting to the electrode surface. Is it clear or not? See now surface may thought, let us assume I have some 100 electrons. 100 electrons on my zinc surface. Is it 100 ions are available on my solution? I don't know. Maybe 100 or maybe 150. So definitely there will be some imbalance. That imbalance, charge imbalance will give some potential. And that potential is called electrode potential. If I measure that potential at standard conditions, that is called standard electrode potential, which is called E0. 
clear now the next question is because if you go back to that reactions let us say uh, the electrochemical series which i have given maybe i it is at the end yeah if if you look at these values f2 plus 2 electrons gives us 2f minus has a value of 2.87 actually if you go back to your thermodynamics maybe you know pretty well can we able to find out the absolute enthalpies absolute entropies you cannot able to find out absolute values you will always find the relative values avuna kada delta h kadtam gaani h katlem single entries katlemo you will always find delta h delta s why that delta h because always we will measure in terms of relative with another absolute values you cannot predict here also as i said in the electrode maybe i can show you the figure yeah it is very difficult to determine the potential at the interface though i have showed you the metal in water solution this is the interface but it is very difficult to determine the interface values interface potentials that interface potentially i said as a electrode potential but that is very very difficult to find out the potential of the interfaces so like in thermodynamics absolute values we cannot determine similarly single electrode potentials cannot be determined we need to measure in terms of relative with another only so what we did we did we we taken some standard electrode system where i assumed the potential of the standard system as zero so that if i connect with standard with another one relative i can i can i can find out the difference and difference is the actual value of this one only because this is zero are you getting or not see i want to find out let us say this is the electrode let us say this is the one electrode system where i want to measure that is the first case f2 f2 system f2 plus 2f uh, two electrons gives us 2f minus for this i want to have the e not value what i will do i will connect this system with another electrode which value is zero so that the relative value is because this is zero the relative value is this minus this this is already zero so the value will be this is so what they have find out is they have took a system which is called standard hydrogen electrode system s h e standard hydrogen electrode sometimes called nhe normal hydrogen electrode what is this system this system main principle is i will show you the main principle yes this is the main system 2h plus plus 2 electron giving rise h2 for this system they have assumed e not as zero that means they are making an equilibrium between hydrogen gas at one atmosphere to the h plus ions at one molar concentration they want to make equilibrium what is the equilibrium if you go back i will show you yeah they took some platinum wire and they have bubbled some hydrogen gas and they have dipped this platinum wire in a hcl solution where the concentration is one molar so unit concentration one atmosphere pressure maintained at temperature of 25 degree centigrade will give an equilibrium reaction between 2h plus plus 2 electrons gives us h2 that means what whatever the hydrogen gas that i pumped will go and occupy the surface of the platinum and this hydrogen because platinum is a very good catalytic surface they they in turn form h2 as h plus by losing electrons and what are the h plus ions in the solution they also contact the platinum surface accept the electrons two h plus plus two electrons to form h2 you are getting or not see let me show you because it little bit complex see the hydrogen at one atmosphere can go back as h plus and two electrons on the same surface of the platinum on the other hand because i am taking one molar hcl solution h plus ions are available 
this expression can also chip on the platinum surface react with two electrons to form h2 so there is a balance between h plus and two electrons and hydrogen on the surface of the platinum if i maintain h2 gas at one atmosphere and concentration at one molar at temperature of 25 degrees with this setup the e not value is zero because i assume delta g and delta e are zero now you understood so if i have some nh or shc setup i know e not value is zero i can connect this nh system to any electrode system and i can find out the relative value delta value means what delta 1 minus delta uh, h1 minus h2 because it's already zero so the value will be the electrode value only. so this setup this setup is called standard hydrogen electrode shc so the question they will ask you is what is the reference electrode system the first and foremost reference electrode is standard hydrogen electrode now the questions will be because it is very difficult to send the hydrogen gas at one atmosphere people have failed to refabricate this system so they have gone for two more electrode systems two more reference electrodes you see two more reference electrodes ag agcl in which silver chloride is equilibrium with the silver see silver chloride is equilibrium with the silver or caramel electrode system where nitrous chloride is equilibrium with the mercury in saturated case solution so these two are also two reference electrodes so why you want reference electrodes now why you want reference electrodes because in order to measure the electrode potential of any electrode i need a reference and that because if i need because if i don't know reference i cannot estimate the single electrode potential as i said single electrode potential is very difficult because it is difficult to find the interface potentials so i need a red to reference so that reference is either nhe or agcl or se standard calamine these two can be fabricated very easier in the lab rather than nh or shc because for shc you need hydrogen gas to be bubbled at one atmosphere and handling the hydrogen gas is very difficult so you cannot reproduce in the lab so we will go with either ag agcl or shc understood now so if you if you if you go back to that series maybe i can show you the series see all these potentials are Measure by connecting with NH. So these are all, these are all with respect to NH because this fluorine reaction is connected to a setup called NH. Then I can estimate the reference value, relative value. Clear now? Now for all the reactions they have measured. You understood now how how it is measured? by connecting with the standard hydrogen electrode they have measured the e not values now after measuring e not values you know an entire story because what to connect which is e not which is uh, cathode which is anode you know all the situation because we have discussed about what we discussed sacrificial anode we have discussed what is the concept of sacrificial anode which is anode which is cathode we have discussed all these things fine no you you look at here above the series are all called inert or acts as a cathode below the series are all called active or called anodic materials no if you see i have i have given some of the composites also if you look at here in stainless steel also you can see stainless steel 316 is in our compared to stainless steel 316 because of the small composition difference are you getting or not what is stainless steel chromium do put to the iron is called stainless steel that means something 4% or 5% depending on the corrosion resistance i will add some chromium 
So depending on the other elements added, there are different classification of the shell structure. 306, 304, 316. Because I may add some carbon also. I may add some other dopant also along with chromium. So depending on the different classifications of the stainless steel, sometimes stainless steel may act as cathode, may act as anode because of the small variation, composition variation. You understood this table? See, now branch. What is branch? Copper, tin alloy is called branch. Now branch will be always in you know, compared to some, some other materials which are in the dump. That means what? Branch will be cathode compared to stainless steel. That means what? If I connect branch with stainless steel, which will be corroded? You look at the series. Bronze is top or bottom? So bronze is top, will act as inner, whereas stainless steel at the down will act as anode and get corroded. So the very first information from we will get from the electrochemical series is which material will act as inert, which material will act as active. The inert materials will be safeguard, the active materials will be getting corroded. Okay, now let's move to a, a very important one. So we all discussed these things. So this is factory standard we discussed. So this all we discussed. Fine. So you look at this figure. What is this? This is the rotor of a ship where for the forward movement of the ship you want the rotors, wheels. Now you observe what is this white color one. So why you want? Why you want? Sacrificial anode. So zinc will get in color and iron will be protected. This is what we have understood now. Okay, now here you should have one question. What is the size of anode? What is the size of cathode? See, you have a big, big wheel or a big structure, but the material, metal we are connecting is very small. Can I can protect? Can I protect the ship? Of course I can. So there is a principle here involved. I do not want bigger sizes of the metals as a sacrificial anodes. So there is a principle called, I will show you the principle here. Yeah, surface area effect. Very, very important principle here. Surface area effect. Surface area plays very important role in controlling the corrosion or very important role in playing the corrosion kinetics. What is this surface area effect? Let us understand. You know there will be different parts where anodic reaction takes place, where cathodic reaction takes place. So the place where anodic reaction takes place is called anodic or anode zone, where cathodic reaction takes place is called cathodic zone or cathode. So anode oxidation takes place, cathode direction takes place. We know that. So on any surface, definitely there will be both. Is it not? There will be both. Now we have understood. Simultaneously, both oxidation directions should take place at the same pace we have discussed. That means on the same surface, somewhere there will be anode part, somewhere there will be cathode part, somewhere there will be electrons lost, somewhere there will be electron gain. Is it not? Now, for example, at the anodic place, where electrons are losing. There is a cathode place where electrons are gaining. So definitely there will be some currents generated at the anode, there will be current generated at the cathode. So the current at the anode is called anodic current, the current at the cathode is called cathodic current. So we, we understood the principle of electron neutrality is the rate of oxidation, the rate of friction should be same. So the anodic current should be equal to the cathodic current. Right? Otherwise, what will happen? There will not be charge neutrality. It will charge up. But that is not the case. We understood now. 
So definitely the anodic current should be equal to cathodic current so that there will be neutral principle. Now what we do is in corrosions, because the corrosion currents are very very small, we do, we calculate current densities rather than current, we calculate current densities. What is current density? Current by surface area is called current density. Current by surface area. So why I do surface area? Because any corrosion will take place at a specific site only. Not the entire surface. Mere abjur chayin eppre na sare. Corrosion jari kite ni baag peculiar ka abjur chaste. Only local sites lana corrosion jari kite. Mottam surface in the jara kate corrosion. So it's, it's a specific surface only. The corrosion will start and corrosion will propagate. So I want to only have this surface area where corrosion is taking place. So I will account the corrosion current with respect to this surface area. So that's why I will calculate current densities rather than current. So current by surface area of this part is called current density. So, so this one. So current current by surface area. You just divide in surface area and get current density as small i n. Similarly for the cathode, cathode current density is equal to current i cathode by surface area of the cathode. Small i a, small i c is called current densities of anode and current densities of cathode. No, I just rearrange those things. What I will get? IA is equal to IC into SC by SA. How I got that formula? How I got that formula? I just rearranged it. Now IA is equal to IC into SC by SA. Now that SC by SA, what is SC? Surface area of the cathode. What is SA? Surface area of the anode. Now that SC by SA is called stiffing factor or amplifying factor. This SC by SA is called amplifying factor or stiffing factor. And based on that factor, your corrosion rates will be increased or decreased. How? Just go back to the formula again. If I increase this SC by SA ratio, what will happen? SC by SA is increased. What happened to IA? Because IA is equal to IC into SC by SA. This factor is increased. It means IA will increase. What will happen if IA will increase? Anodic current is increasing means what? Corrosion is increasing. Is it not? Because corrosion will take place at anode only. We already know that. Let us assume SC by SA is decreased. What will happen to IA? IA will decrease because SC by SA is decreased. IA will decrease. IA decrease means what? Corrosion is decreased. Understood now? Now let us tell me SC by SA increase means what? <coughs> Either SC is increased or SC is decreased. Is it not? I am increasing SC by SA. Means, means Either SC is increased or SC is decreased. Whatever it may be, SC by SA ratio is increased. Now, what is SC increased? Surface area of the cathode is increased or surface area of the anode is decreased. The total factor will increase and corrosion will increase. Understood now? So, that is the principle here. You read out here. When small anodic metals touch a large cathode, small anode, SCA is small. Large cathode, SC is large. So what will happen to SC by SA? More. So corrosion will be more. A much higher rate of corrosion. That's what happened in the case of a ship where I have the rotor. I'll, I'll go back again. Let us see some examples. You see the example here? This is a copper bar. And these are some what we call some nuts, some rivets. See, this is steel rivet. This is copper rod. 
initially at the start of the experiment i have put this copper bar with steel rivets in some solution where some 3% sodium chloride solution this is at the start of the experiment look at here start of the experiment now observe after 6 months the situation now observe after maybe what is what after 10 months we observe Now why it has happened, the corrosion is very severe, you see, just three months, so much of corrosion and complete corrosion. Now you look back your formula, this is copper, this is, this is steel means iron. Now what is the position of copper and iron? Look at the series, copper will be at the top, so which will be inert, which will be cathode, iron will be at the down. Down will be active or anode. So cathode means copper. Surface area of copper is surface area of the copper is large. Surface area of the anode is small. What is SC by SC? More. So corrosion is more. Just reverse it. Maybe I can remove that figure. You reverse it. That's more. That means what I did. Instead of the copper bar, I took the iron bar or stainless steel bar and instead of copper rivets, instead of steel rivets, I have put copper rivets. Just reverse screen. Earlier one is copper bar, steel rivets. Now steel bar, copper rivets. Now we observe the scenario of same thing before 3 months, 10 months in sodium chloride solution. You see, there is very less corrosion. Compared to previous figure, if you go back to the previous figure, you see, highly drastic corrosion. Understood? So the surface area plays very, very important role. That's what I have. See, why I kept this figure here? Sometimes if you know, if you understand the pipe designs, see, this is completely steel. This, this other part is copper. So dissimilar metals, dissimilar areas, they will connect. Why they connect? Purposefully they connect because in order to prevent the corrosions. This is not what the designer wants. It is a look of some kind. This part of the copper is stainless steel because of the principles. So I can show you so many examples. You see the, in this case, aluminum plate, steel rivets. This is completely aluminum. This is steel, steel rivets. Reverse case, steel plate aluminum rivets. Here SC base is very large. No, SC base is very small. So there is no corrosion. Here there is severe corrosion. So why it is almost no corrosion? If you look at SC base is very small. What is SC here? What is SA here? So you have to look at where is aluminium and where is iron because they are connected aluminium with steel. So where is my position of aluminium, where is my position of iron? You look at the series. You will come to know which is cathode, which is anode. So you will come to know what is SC, what is SC. You getting now? <coughs> Just interchanging will completely change the scenario of the corrosion. I can show you. It's a, you see here? Copper plate steel rivets. You see, completely lost. But reverse it. Only this much is corroded, but entire plate is almost safeguarded. What I did, I have changed the areas. Instead of making big area of the anode, make small area of the anode. Big area of the cathode, make small area of the cathode. Your corrosion will collapse. So this is called surface area effects. Understand? I can show you a lot of examples. You see? See, uh, maybe the color contrast is not good. This copper bolt steel nut will be corroded faster compared to steel bolt with copper nut. So easy for the time it can corrode it. So dissimilar metals will be connected. So these are called designer spot. Maybe I can show you some more examples. This is what. 
So e even in our Godre's bead was, if you clearly understand, the central part is having one metal, and another part surrounding this is having another metal, and the areas also will be different because of this cloth as you can see. Maybe look at. So different, different areas, different connecting materials. So here, why I am saying is the area plays important role. You see, see whenever we have a large uh, beams, structures, we should be very clear because these parts will go into localized corrosion. We will discuss pitting corrosion. We call as or crevice corrosion. So at that corrosions, you cannot observe from your naked eye. It's slowly like poisoning time. So underground only the corrosion predominates and cracks and beam collapse. Railway platforms. Even if you look at what is called this Statue of Liberty. So you know the principle of Statue of Liberty. This entire Outside construction is copper, inside is iron. No same S C B S C principle works here. Copper surface area is more compared to inside surface area of iron. Entire outside surface is copper only. You Google it, Statue of Liberty. But there was a problem happened in some of the case. It was failed again. They have recouped back. They have inserted some inert materials. The problem is solved. But why I quoted is the concept of S C B. That's why. Statue of Liberty will be as it is till date, without any collapse. This material is constructed with iron only, but outside surface is copper. Surface area of copper is more compared to surface area of the iron. S C B S R issue. Fine. So with this, I'll almost finish with the first part, seventy percent syllabus. In the next class, I will move to polarization. Which is also very important, so I'll cover in the next class. So, any doubt in this class? I have discussed about the surface area effects. So, why I started surface area effect? If you go back, I started with the this rotor or a wheel. Why we got this wheel? Very small fraction of the G because of the surface area effect. Okay. clear so in this class we have discussed the electrode potentials what is mean by electrode potential what are the reference electrodes how the electrochemical series has been designed or developed and then i move to the concept of surface area effects where structures can be protected if you have the design idea what surface of the cathode should be there what surface area of the anode should be there when i am connecting these two i cannot connect whichever manner i like ఈ ఏరియా పెద్ద ఏరియా తక్కువ చేస్తే అయిపోయా మొన్న కూడా ఇంకేం లేదు సో వి షుడ్ ఆల్వేస్ థింక్ ద డిజైన్స్ క్లియర్